Yeah, at least a century. It's been rolling water through here. It definitely needs updating. So, I mean, it's pretty. That's Steve Pappas isn't sure when this irrigation canal was built. Yeah. But he knows it wasn't any time recently. I don't know the exact date, but it's from the early 1800s. Pappas is the manager of the East Fork Irrigation District in Hood River County. The district provides water to more than 10,000 acres of farmland, dotted with orchards growing apples, pears, and cherries. But Pappas is facing a problem endemic across the West, where irrigation systems played a key role in how this part of the country was settled. They were built by hand and horse, or they were built by, you know, that first generation that really came out West. And so these systems have worked very well for a long time. They're, that's Julie O'Shea. Executive Director of the Farmers Conservation Alliance. And the systems themselves are just not as efficient in meeting the dynamic needs of modern water delivery. We see systems that are losing 30 to 70 percent of the water being drawn, not making it out to the farm. The East Fork District runs what's called a traveling system. That means Pappas has to keep a certain amount of water running through the canals at all times, just in case a farmer needs to use it. He likened it to leaving your sink on all day, just in case you want a glass of water. And given that most of the district's canals are open, that can make for a lot of waste. Whatever they're not using, then is gonna, it would kick into an overflow, and this overflow just kicks into a drainage ditch down here. As temperatures have climbed over the last few decades, Pappas has seen the changes trickle down from the glaciers on the slopes of Mount Hood, where most of his water comes from, to his district downriver. You know, the climate changes, the glaciers are smaller and smaller. We have Less than a dozen. 20 years ago, there was over two dozen. So, And the stakes, uh, they here, couldn't be higher. Here. Economically, if we don't have this water and we don't modernize, eventually these farms dwindle away and become condos. That's the key word for a lot of irrigation districts across the West. Modernization. And then this is where we divert water. Though. That means converting open canals to buried pipelines and swapping hand cranks that let water into the system for automatic head gates that can be controlled remotely. We're just starting our modernization plan here, so we're about 25 years behind. But we're on an aggressive approach. He said they'll have most of the canals piped within seven years, but at a price tag of roughly $40 million. And that's not including the main canal. They're saying that's about 64 million, so. So 100 million. Yeah, 100 million dollars. Just a cool right. 100 million. You can donate to our website. <laughs> And that's where Pappas has looked to outside groups for help. I think the Farmers Conservation Alliance has been a key partner. We're working with individual irrigation communities to help them plan out what their vision is for modernization, to find partners to implement that, and then to find the funding to be able to actually implement on those projects. O'Shea said there is funding out there. There are state and federal matching grants available, but the application process is very complex, and the competition can be fierce. Without them, helping us, you know, we, we would be lost. But the benefits of upgrading a water system, they're hard to dispute. We know we want farms and food grown in our state. We know we want water and streams. We know we want energy resiliency. These pieces aren't in competition with each other. When you modernize an irrigation system, you really get this win-win-win benefit. And you don't have to look far to see those benefits in practice. So that most of our growers are irrigating with about half of the amount of water that they did 30 years ago. Les Perkins, yeah, so they, who they manages the Farmers uh, Irrigation uh, District in Lower Hood River Valley, said it wasn't that long ago that his system looked a lot like the one in East Fork. We had 70 miles of open canal running through really steep slopes, uh, wooded slopes. They continually failed, so we started putting pipe in the ground, and that did a couple things for us. Uh, it made it easier to get the water down where we used it, and then it conserved a whole bunch of water. We lost more than half of the water uh, from the point that we diverted it to the point we got it to the farms. With a pipe system, gravity pressurizes the water. And that means farmers don't need to pump it out of a canal. This is powerhouse number two. But more importantly, it opens up the opportunity to turn that pressurized water into electricity. So all the water that comes through and is going back into the river comes through here? Comes through here, passes the farms on the way, we deliver water to farms. Uh, what's not used for agriculture ends up coming through the powerhouse. Oh, it's a working model, exact working model of the turbine. That we water have. is sprayed onto a giant rudder, spinning a shaft connected to a turbine, which creates power that is then fed into the grid. So we use this unit for demonstrations for a lot of school groups that come through and want to understand more about how, how you produce electricity. Yeah, and reporters too. And reporters, yeah, absolutely. 
The Farmer's District has two of these powerhouses, capable of producing up to 4.4 megawatts of power, enough to power more than 4,000 homes. But it's been the best investment we could have made. And the money they made selling that power made more upgrades to the rest of the system possible. So we started putting pipe in the ground. That actually uh, gave us more water available. Uh, it made more money through the powerhouses. It gave better returns for our growers. And that feedback loop just kept going for, for 30 years. Now, with a fully piped system, Perkins has seen his customers' water needs shrink dramatically. But for Pappas, the water savings are just half the equation. We need to have be balanced. You know, they need water to produce the food and their crops, but we also in turn need to make sure we're keeping a healthy ecosystem with the fish and the habitat. And by modernizing our system, closing it off, closing up canals, it all works in harmony together. After all, every drop of water that's wasted, you never get back. Kale joins me now. Super interesting story. And one of the questions is, how are they ever going to pay for all that? Well, you know, there are a bunch of different streams of revenue that they can tap into. There's state programs, there's federal programs, but all of those are matching grants. And so they have to come up with some money on their own. I mean, Steve Pappas was kind of joking when he said that they have a donate button on their website, but they do have a donate <laughs> button on their website. So, wow. you know, they have to cobble all this stuff together, but it happens over time. And so they don't have to come up with all of it at once. Okay, and you were saying that one example is they did come up with it like 30 years, right? Yeah, I mean, at the Farmers Irrigation District, they were able to come up with enough money to get some water in pipes. Then they were able to get their powerhouse in there, which generates revenue. They were able to use that revenue to then put more pipes in, and it became kind of a system that feeds itself. Yeah, I think a lot of us don't think about irrigation canals and that whole system until we maybe drive by one. But it makes me wonder how much of this is going on around the state. So I asked them that, and Oregon has 73 irrigation districts all over the place. Wow. Mm -hmm. And this, this group, the Farmers Conservation Alliance, they're working with 35 of them to help modernize their systems. So you get a sense that, you know, this is happening all over the place, but each one is different. They're all different sizes and they all exist in different areas that have different water needs. Like you imagine the folks in Hood River have a lot different water needs than the folks in Morrow County or down in Klamath. Yeah, wow, interesting stuff. All right, thanks, Cale. Appreciate you bringing that forward.